What you are observing are 24 fencing setups where an agent is attempting to attack and defend based on 10,000 unique animations trained over 50 million steps. Now fencing is a complex sport. It is extremely fast, requiring quick reflexes even to observe, let alone to simulate. However, I think it would be quite fascinating to see how an AI learns this. The ultimate goal of this project is to create a player that can approach the opponent, strike and evade attacks as well. And sure, I could set realistic limits on different bones and try animating it that way, but making it look like Olympic fencing seems quite tricky and something that requires even more training time. Also, this approach has already been done, so there's no novelty in it. Therefore, we're using animation layers instead. So in Unity, you can assign different animations to layers and blend them. For instance, if I have a walk animation on layer 1 and a slash animation on layer 2, I can blend them to different extents. Additionally, there are avatar masks. This means that I can select specific bones of the player for each animation. For example, if I want the left side of the body to slash and the right side to walk, I can achieve that using a combination of avatar masks and animation layers. It might look a bit odd and impractical, but it could definitely be useful in some scenarios. And that's precisely what we plan to do. We'll divide the bones into four groups, namely right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg, torso and head. I found that the animations look much more natural with the setup. Then we will create numerous unique animations from 10 predefined ones, which are walk, run, jump, dodge back, slash, crouch slash, stab, crouch block, standing block, and standing vertical block. We can also add custom layer speeds for each animation layer and reverse some animations as well to further modify these generated animations. We'll use this to create custom animations, save them to a text file, and use them for training an agent for various tasks. I chose the number of generated animations to be 10,000 because it's a manageable number for my computer and it really can't handle more. And we will follow a few simple rules for training where it only counts if the torso, front or back, is struck by the tip of the sword. And the opponent gets a point if the player exits the piece in any direction. For this, we will give a large reward for hitting the opponent, a large penalty for getting hit in the torso, a small penalty for going out of bounds, a small penalty for running out of time, and another small penalty on every new animation executed to avoid wasting time. So let's start training. After the first million steps, we can see how our agent performs. Well, looks like our agent definitely got confused from all the rewards and penalizations. So we will simplify the reward structure to reward 1 if the agent successfully hit the opponent and negative 1 if the agent went out of bounds. So after 5 million steps, our agent can finally walk to the opponent. But what was interesting to see is that it figured multiple ways to get to the opponent and attack. These include running straight to the opponent, walking to the opponent with a lot of sword movement, running and then hitting from the back, walking, a little bit of rotation and then hitting from the back, and this long sequence where there's some real struggle but it finally found a way. Now that the agent has learned to approach the opponent, it needs to be more cautious given the opponent also has a sword. So I've increased the penalty our player receives upon encountering the opponent's sword. Initially, the agent struggled a bit to move towards the opponent but eventually managed to land a hit. Since the opponent's sword was stationary, our player had an easy time striking the enemy. However, the previously effective rotational maneuver started causing problems as it led to the player getting hit by the opponent's sword a few times. After some time, the player has become much more cautious about using the rotational technique. It now either uses the move sparingly or opts for a different strategy altogether to hit the opponent. Now that the agent can successfully hit the opponent, the next step was to animate the opponent as well, enabling it to strike back at our player. So I assigned the same animations to various layers for the opponent, allowing it to randomly select which animation to play next. This posed a significant challenge because not only did the player have to analyze these six moves, but the agent could also reach the opponent at any moment during these animations. This process was really time consuming. 
In the beginning, the player often got hit, resulting from various factors. These included unlucky timing when approaching the enemy, the rotational technique backfiring again, direct stabs in the back, and vulnerability to crouched attacks. Over time, the agent learned to adapt. It discovered that holding the sword vertically neutralized crouch attacks. Additionally, it began to dodge more and circle the opponent to analyze and plan its attacks better. It even figured out how to attack from behind. Having mastered hitting stationary targets, we move on to training both the red and blue agents using the same script to observe their performance in attacking and defending against moving targets. Because we are using the same script for both players, with our reward system set to 1 for a successful hit and negative 0.5 for being hit, the average reward, ideally, should be around 0.5 after training. Assuming that the agents overcome other penalizing factors like going out of bounds or running out of time. As training progressed further, the agents learned to use jumps in their attacks and improved their dodging as well. However, they began dodging back a bit too frequently leading to a need to adjust the reward parameters to increase the penalty for going out of bounds. After tweaking the penalization and continuing training, it became apparent that the agents were plateauing in their performance. They were consistently scoring closer to 0.4 with no significant improvement over the last 5 million steps. Therefore, I decided to use this model for our final fencing match. Okay, so the players have been placed and the models have been added. We have trained our agents for a long time and it's game time. And the match begins with a quick touch, which is the most common type of attack I saw during training. Now we can see the jump attack at play here. This bout showed both jumping and dodging at play. This attack was quite rare during training since the player had to turn and attack at the right time. Now we can see some rotational movement leading to a successful attack. This was the first time I ever saw this move. Some rotation maneuver combined with a jump attack. And a long bout leads to red reaching for the opponent and winning the match. The one aspect we did not see in action was pairing. This was because there was no reward set for sword to sword contact, so the agent just completely overlooked it. Training the AI to incorporate pairing could potentially take another 50 million steps of training, making it a potential future project. However, we still managed to demonstrate what can be accomplished with just 10 predefined animations for a complicated sport like fencing. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next time.